Thank you, members. We now have a quorum. I declare this meeting of the committee open. I advise that it will be streamed live to the City of Adelaide's website, and a recording will also be published to the internet. Please note that this means that uh, your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed, or published publicly by the Council, including transferring outside of Australia. The Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains, and we pay respect to their elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs, and relationship with the land. We acknowledge that they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. And we also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present. Uh, I have apologies from Councillor Moran and Councillor Kira. Um, soon said he was running away. I can't promote it. All right, and we'll kick on to 3 1 East West Bikeway. Thank you, Clinton. Thank you, Chair, through you. Um, thank you for your time tonight, uh, members, um, to attend this workshop on bikeways. I know it's a little bit out of cycle, so I do appreciate um, the time that you've taken to get here. Um, in the CEO's absence, he's just asked that I um, um, facilitate this workshop. Just a quick recap before we start and just to confirm the reasons for the workshop. Um, as you know, the north-south um, east-west bikeways are the subject of the city bikeways funding deed, which is this document here. Um, it's an agreement between the City of Adelaide and, and the Minister for Transport and Infrastructure. Um, as you are also aware, $12 million has been allocated to the delivery of these two bikeways, um, $6 million each from the state government and the City of Adelaide 50-50 funding agreement. Uh, the City Bikeways funding deed ends on the 30th of June 2021. The department has notified the um, City of Adelaide that the deed is unlikely to be extended. The North South Bikeway is progressing on schedule. Um, we've also notified the department that um, there are delays due to um, third party developments that are out of our control, which they're aware of. There is a risk. Um, however, that the state government grant funding allocated to the East West Bikeway um, will be withdrawn if the bikeway is not delivered by 30th of June 2021. If Council is to deliver the east-west bikeway in line with the requirements of the deed, um, the route alignment and the delivery method will need to be um, agreed and uh, that's why we're here um, before you tonight. Um, the delivery of the east-west bikeway is included as an action in Council's strategic plan 2020 to 2024 and is listed as a major project in the 2020-2021 business plan and budget. Both of these documents have been recently adopted by council. So, so tonight the teams will present um, a workable solution for East West um, for your consideration and feedback. And I've got um, Daniel Keller here on the left um, to present the material. And I've also got Matthew Morrissey here to support and hopefully you've um, had the opportunity to look at some of the pre-reading that was sent through last week. Um, so I'll pass on to Dan. Thanks. Thank you, Clinton. Um, obviously the information pack that was provided to you late last week, I'm not gonna go through all that information. However, today I'll go through sort of the cut down version of that and go through some of the rationale for this workable East-West solution. Um, Clinton's covered the key messages of the funding deed and why we're here. Um, I guess the aim of this workshop here is to get some feedback on the workable route that we've come up with and talk through some delivery model options, obviously noting the deed end date. Over the last several months, we've been looking at various street corridors to provide an east-west bikeway through the city. Uh, it's included Perry Waymouth Street, Flinders Franklin, Great Wakefield, and it's also included combinations of these streets as well, which include dog leg options. So it might be a different east west, not a single straight line. Routes further north of these three haven't been considered as part of this. Obviously, the first street north of these three is Carry Grenfell, obviously, public transport corridor. The next one north is Highley Street and Rundle, Rundle Mall. Obviously, not an option to cut through there, and North Terrace has got trams on it. And when considering the main three corridors, we've looked at um, various alignments and options within those. Um, for Waymouth, we've looked at numerous options, including separated bike lanes, both best practice and minimum dimensions, noting that Piri Street and Waymouth Street have approximate curb to curb dimensions of 13 metres. And 
that's compared to Flinders Franklin about 20 metres and Wayfield Street and Grove Street approximately 28 metres. So obviously Grove Street is very narrow, we've looked at other options including one-way streets, two-way bikeways on one side of the street, a shared street, uh, like a bank street or corner place where all modes of transport would share the space and shared traffic where bikes and vehicles share the space which is similar to Hindley Street west of Morford Street. So again like a 30k an hour speed environment. But again that technically doesn't meet the intent of the deed for a separated bike facility. Uh, we've looked at combinations of Pure Waymouth, Franklin, Flinders, Great Wayfield using a north-south connecting street to connect the two east-west sections. For example, creating east-west bikeway by connecting Franklin Street to Waymouth Street and Piri via Bentham Street, obviously to provide that continuous east-west link through the city. Um, however, considering the competing priorities for all of these streets, which are quite different yet quite similar, um, the preferred route that we've come up with, or the most workable option, is Franklin Street, Glimmer Street, and Wakefield Street connected by Gawler Place. So this has been based on minimising impacts to general traffic, reducing parking loss, ease of navigation along the route for people riding their bikes, uh, reduced bus stop interaction, and obviously being able to provide a safe street environment for all users. Some of the background data that's helped inform this investigation. This diagram here shows um, some daily average weekday counts coming into the city. Um, so sort of coming in from the east and both the west, there's over 2,000 people on bikes a day coming into the city. The majority of those are for work-based trips, however there are recreational and retail trips as well in that. So obviously there's a lot of bikes coming in, we need to provide facility for them to get both into the city and through it, if that's their design. The next slide summarises the average weekday motor vehicle volumes as well as bike volumes. Obviously they're quite variable along the sections and Great Wayfield's by far the busiest of all those routes, however it's by far the widest as well. Um, if you cut a section through these three routes, so sort of some sections cater for up to 1700 bikes per day, it's obviously quite busy, and um, providing a safe facility on one of these corridors would attract people on bikes from these other corridors to that safe facility, in addition to providing for new trips, obviously providing a facility people would be encouraged to ride their bikes. This is a grammatic representation of that workable option. So obviously at the western end at West Terrace, there's already traffic signals there. So minimal works would be required there to match in with that. Um, Franklin Street all the way through Victoria Square to Flinders Street. Gawler Place is currently a one-way street in the northbound direction. We need to implement facilities to allow people to travel in the southbound direction on their bikes. And then Wakefield Street continues up to where the Parklands Trail crosses Wakefield Road. Obviously that's where a lot of people are coming in from particularly the east up Grand Avenue through Victoria Park connecting into this east-west facility getting into the city. So this route has no U Park locations fronting the route and the route's being developed in conjunction with the city access strategy uh, which with the Department of Infrastructure and Transport have been working on with us over the last 12 months or so. We've overlaid that, that proposed route with the journey to work data from the 2016 census. So the bright and the yellow area shows a higher number of people travelling on their bike to get to work. So this, this map shows that both the north, south and the east, west routes do cater for the majority of the existing people that do come into the core of the city. Obviously those areas are generally high rise buildings with a lot of workers in them. And the, the blue dots represent schools. So this this option does cater to five schools along that route, which obviously providing safe access and options for kids getting to school is important for us to do. Um, I'm just now briefly just going to talk about section by section for high level. I won't go into too much detail, I'm more than happy to take questions afterwards. So Franklin Street, west of Morford Street, currently uh, there's signals at West Terrace, so we reuse those. There's currently one lane of traffic in each direction where we retain that. Um, and parallel parking would be retained, however the existing angle parking would be changed to parallel, hence we end up with a result in loss in parking in that section. 
Um, this section has previously had concept design undertaken, so it would be stage one of the implementation if it was approved. And obviously we need to work closely with some of the key stakeholders, which would include St Mary's. The next section of Franklin Street from Morford Street to King William Street currently has two lanes of traffic in each direction. The proposal for a bike way along here would retain two lanes of traffic in each direction during the peaks only. Outside of the peaks, that curbside lane would return to parking to obviously service businesses and, and general parking in the precinct. The street layout here would be similar to Frome Street. And again, we'd have a slight reduction in parking. We'd obviously, when we reinstall the parking, need to meet current day standards, not what was there, which may not be compliant. So again, it'd be a good opportunity to review that to make sure we comply and safe. So whilst we are re removing some parking in these sections, the existing paid parking utilisation from our parking sensors in the ground shows that during business hours, parking is utilised between 60 and 70% of the day. So again, there is capacity in parking out there at the moment. Along Wakefield Street between Gordon Place and Pulteney Street, there's currently two lanes of traffic in each direction and parallel parking. That would be retained. Obviously, we'd need to do a review to make sure parking's in, in accordance with the standards, but we don't see much reduction in parking. Obviously, the street's so wide, there's a lot of unutilised space out there at the moment. Um, and then Wakefield Street between Pulteney Street and then to the eastern extent of the project, there's currently two lanes in each direction and these sections have generally angled parking. That angled parking would need to be turned to parallel parking to accommodate the bikeway. But then, unlike the other section of Finney Street, it would be all day parallel parking, including the peaks. Um, some bus stop inter interactions on both sections of Wakefield Street, I think there's about six or eight bus stops in total. So we need to work through a solution with the department. We've, I've got some more information coming on that shortly. Um, and again, parking utilisation on Wakefield Street the occupancy ranges from 40 to 70 percent during business hours, and again, that's based on the census of the paid park. The top right image there shows a bit of an example of how a bus stop layout may look. Um, ignore the direction of travel, but essentially, it's a floating island in the road. The bikeway is narrowed quite a bit to slow the bike riders down, and they go back behind the bus stop boarding area. Essentially, it's similar to the hotel drop-off areas on Frame Street, where bike lanes narrowed right down, area for people to board on like public transport, and we'd have look to have pedestrian zebra crossings to give people the right of, uh, pedestrians right of way over the bike riders that are travelling through there at a reduced speed. And the bottom image shows a possible cross section, so this would be applicable to Wakefield Street and the eastern section of. Franklin Street, where we've got two permanent lanes of traffic, parking on both sides, a bit of a delineator slash separator, and then a separated bikeway on each side. The connection between Franklin and Flinders and Wakefield Street, uh, we've looked at various options, which is shown in the, the report that, that has been sent through. Looked at all various combinations of Victoria Square, however, Caller Place, which currently has traffic signals at both ends. Uh, it's the most workable option we've come up with. Obviously, Victoria Square, there's traffic capacity impacts, there's tram interactions, and traffic signal issues to overcome. Uh, this one's the most workable. We also need to look at continuing or investigate making more place between Flinders Street and Pure Street two way as well or further north to continue connecting people on bikes into the heart of the city, referring back to that heat map where the journey to work data shows that people go. So next, possible next steps, um, pending on feedback tonight, we need to work with the department to ensure they're comfortable with the solution and that it meets the intent of the deed. We've already had some informal conversations and about some of these options and the treatments. The images on the right hand side show some of the possible treatments that we can implement. So obviously it's not the level of investment that Frome Street underwent a couple of years ago. However, it's functional and it will be able to be delivered within the current budget, which is important. And the options for delivery is the traditional approach that we can undertake, where we develop a concept design, undertake extensive community consultation, 
and then detailed design and then implement the project. If we go down that path, the project will not be completed by June 2021. We'd be pretty lucky to be on the ground starting to construct that section within that time. An alternate option is an iterative design and construction approach. Where essentially, we once we've agreed on the route and the approach as shown in this document here, we undertake some notification of key stakeholders along the route, all stakeholders on the route as to what we're actually going to be implementing. We implement it and then over the next 12 months, we, we essentially review the design, we undertake the stakeholder consultation, which is actually based on the reality, whereas the traditional approach is based on perception, and the perception of impacts, perception of parking loss, perception of traffic impacts. And the iterative approach is actually the reality of it. And it's something that recently the city of Yarra in Melbourne have done. Essentially, they've committed to putting a bikeway in. Instead of taking 10 years to get one bikeway, they've committed to, to getting one in. And again, this does lead to the COVID response to get some things implemented. Now is a pretty critical time for public health and people moving away from some other modes of transport. Um, so now if we just refer back to the the questions, essentially we're just seeking feedback on the route options that we've considered and the workable options that we've presented and also the delivery models that I've briefly spoken through. Thank you. Thanks Daniel. Members? Questions? Certainly. I've, I've just got a quick um, question Chair. Um, in terms of our funding agreement, uh, does it dictate that the work needs to be completed by June 2021 or started or partially? Or money started? spent, I was thinking as well. What's, yeah. Is there any specifics around that, Clinton, or is there some flexibility? Uh, through the Chair, um, it, it is quite specific in terms of the deed expires, um, which would mean that the full funding would need to be exhausted by that date, which is the 30th of June 2021. Um, However, we, we are working in partnership with the department and we, we um, have a verbal agreement with them that, that as long as we can identify a suitable east-west route and we can demonstrate that we have the ability to commence the work and get a fair proportion done, um, clearly there, there's an intent in the deed to deliver an east-west bikeway and I'm sure that we would be able to um, uh, find a way to continue the deed to complete the works if that answers your question. Sure. Yes. Um, yeah, a couple of questions. Uh, happy Drivers Month too, by the way, Chair. Um, um, can I ask the administration on what date the DIT wrote to us? When did they advise us that this matter was urgent? Uh, through the Chair, I'm, I'm not familiar with what you're referring to. Is it specifics? Oh, I, I understand from what everyone is saying and from what the papers are saying that this threat of the funding not being available after June 2021 is a fresh... No, so we've always done that. Oh, okay. So I just wonder why we've waited uh, this long. Okay. Um, uh, I note that there is no cost um, merely what we're being told that it's a sort of a lesser than Frome Street uh, model. Is it going to consume all of the remaining money that is all this expended? That is the option that's being put to us. Uh, through the Chair, the uh, proposed proposal, um, there's a remaining six million uh, within the deed that uh, relates to the east-west portion. Um, until we completely finalise the design components and what uh, bus interactions and school kiss and drop components, we don't exactly know the exact figure at this point in time, but the cost of the lighter weight um, delivery we believe will fit into the $6 million uh, remaining funding um, as compared to the, the front street component. I'm just a bit surprised. Uh, usually when we're presented with a capital works project, we know what the cost is going to be. This one, we won't know what it is until uh, it, it's um, begun. Is that correct? Is that what you're saying? Uh, through the Chair, the first um, 
that there's components that we do know the costs that have had preliminary design undertaken already, but until we have a complete um, picture as to what the proposed route will be, uh, it's hard to uh, define that cost. I'm, I'm trying to understand also what, what is left um, for the completion of the, uh, the North-South Bikeway because uh, we haven't done uh, Rundle Street, North Terrace, North so Terrace, War Memorial Drive, War Memorial Drive, um, up to, uh, I'm sorry, Melbourne Street up to the Fever. Uh, it's sort of not complete. Um, it, do we know how much that's going to cost so that we can work out what's left or will we have to make an additional uh, budget calculation for North South? Uh, through the chair. So essentially, the, from the 12 million that's been allocated for both north, south, and east, west, 6 million has been set aside for east, west. So essentially, the remaining sections of the north, south won't need into the remaining 6 million for east, west. But there's no money left for uh, north, south, is there? Uh, there is. There is. How much is left? Um, we don't, don't, don't have those figures. No. Through the chair, um, don't have those figures to hand, but certainly provide them. And just uh, one final question on the papers at page eight. There's a potted history of motions on the subject, um, and one from six, seven, eight months ago, actually, in uh, March, asking for economic analysis of the economic uplift of access through a separated bikeway to the Adelaide Central Market in consultation with the Market Authority. Changes in real estate value changes uh, along the Frome Street bikeway corridor, economic uplift realised as a result of delivering the Frome Street separated bikeway and the effects of separated bikeways and iterations of limit traffic flow. I didn't see that before. Um, has anyone else? No. Okay. Thank you. That's my question. Robert. Thanks, Chair. Um, and thanks very much for the work on this. Um, I'm just wanting to uh, firstly understand the Flinders Franklin um, element of this. Those concepts have been done previously. So, is what's been presented today largely draws on those concepts? Are there significant changes in terms of the approach? Through the chair, those concepts that were previously developed will be more based on a frame street. So, so level of investment. Okay. So yep. essentially, functionality would be pretty much the same, but the, the treatment will be different. So it'd be more more based on flexi posts, concrete islands, and and line marking rather than the full full street upgrade. This is more like a frame street light kind of correct scenario. Okay. Yeah. Look, that that makes sense to me. And in, in in terms of feedback, I must say I've always been of the the view that. I think Frome Street is fantastic, but for me that is kind of the Rolls-Royce example of, of what can be done. And one of those scenarios where I would hate to see the desire to make that the standard that is rolled across the whole city being an impediment to rolling out um, more bikeways. That, that's always been my um, my view, that I think it, it's fantastic, but we've got to get you know something rolled out um, elsewhere. So with that in mind, I think what has been suggested looks really good um, as a, a way forward and perhaps a bit of a compromise. Um, I think um, the point that you make about consultation uh, is a good one in terms of the process that you've suggested. And I also think there's been significant community consultation around this over the last 10 years. A huge amount of discussion in the community about this discussions about different routes, different approaches. I think everybody in the city of Adelaide has had an opportunity to <laughs> express their views. My thinking is now is the time for action. Other cities around the world are doing precisely that. They're rolling out bikeways, getting the infrastructure happening. And, you know, I think the message is no more analysis paralysis and let's get, you know, something happening. And uh, I think this looks like an exciting way forward. So I'd be very keen to see us get moving on it. Lord Mayor. Thank you. Um, look, I agree with 
Councillor Sims, in terms of um, what you've put forward, I think is a really uh, reasonable option that looks at all of the other options that we've been looking at forever. I do thank the team for their patience and their consideration of the many, many things that we've asked you to look at in terms of separated, uh, one way, two way, uh, the different street options. Um, uh, I do like, I think the majority of everyone in this room, I do want to see that delivered before uh, the deed expires. And certainly I think that we've been, uh, this has been going round and round for long enough. And um, particularly if you look at the number of motions that have gone through, I think you've captured a few of them there, um, to actually have an east-west that goes along uh, Franklin, uh, Gawler Wakefield um, also addresses the traffic, also addresses some of the problems that we had in Perry Weymouth around traffic lights and entry and exits to car parks. Um, it's great that it addresses five schools, including ending up on West Terrace, uh, very close to Adelaide High School and the connection over there. Um, and also obviously talks very clearly to where the majority of cyclists are heading, which was the other uh, pieces of information that we've been sort of looking to see where the end of route is. So um, I thank you for the work. We always understood, well, at least I did, that we were never going to get the Friday Street outcome a second time, particularly for the length of the east-west cycleway. Um, so, I mean, I'm hoping that the footpaths and the curbs are in a little bit better shape than what we just saw on there. But, um, uh, I think it would be great for us to complete that and actually have both of those parts running in the next eight months. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Franz? Yes, um, thank you from me as well. What I do appreciate is, is all the numbers and the statistics that are in it because it helps me to visualise, you know, what, who are we servicing? And uh, I think it does sort of do very well. Um, because the schools is something I didn't think about as that, and particularly after having heard that, uh, um, you know, uh, the Botanic uh, has got you know, 400 children cycling there. I think it was the word last week, wasn't it? Um, then I think that's that's an indication of the, the safety aspect. I think that's brilliant. Um, I do have just a couple of thoughts around that. One is that uh, I know there's a lot of people that come around uh, through Victoria Park and through Wakefield Street. Um, what is our um, what is our, uh, how are we going to bring them together through the park lands? Because if we're talking using that now as a collector for people to come into the city and encourage them to use that, that entrance, then uh, we, they need to be able to just link up really easily with the circle around the city, particularly for those two that really is, is a large number. That means that we're funneling them into this, this channel that uh, is so we get the best value out of it. And the other question is that uh, using Royal Place uh, is, is fabulous. And obviously that also links it all the way down to run the mall, which I think is great. But the only thought is, okay, if people are using that is to get onto this, this, this west, how is the return trip? So if they are going all the way down, how what how would they then come back onto this uh, roadway? Um, you know, and so they can use it uh, as that uh, that easier connector through the middle of the city rather than saying front row. Because if you're going here, then you'll continue on towards around the mall. But if you're coming now the other way, how would you, you know, what would you see people doing? Um, and I also do know that Grove Street has just been, it is still being upgraded, so anything along there would be crazy. Um, yeah, it's from that. And I think. And uh, I suppose just a little bit of that interaction with Front Road, because I know uh, that uh, Wakefield starts with, with a larger amount of traffic, whereas Flinders, for example, is smaller and it gets larger. So it is then be interesting to see how the, the interaction between the north, south, and east, west, and where people are coming together, because obviously that core has the greatest number, but they are coming from still from different angles. It'd be nice to know how you can, uh, how they are sort of ending there, because that also helps us with thinking about the next. Uh, you know, quite ways. Where is it that uh, we're able to sort of, well, there's really quite a few. Are they travelling on those? If so, um, then how can we you know, make that, uh, make them aware that these are the best channels for them to get to this uh, centre of the city? Do you wish to respond? Uh, through the Chair, um, 
The first one at the eastern end of the project, um, the current red line that's shown on the drawing ends at the pathways failure. So we'd be proposing to put in a pedestrian actuated crossing, which then helps people that are coming through Victoria Park to get into and out of the city. That obviously improves safety for people using the Parklands Trail. So it's kind of a ticks two boxes, both facilitates bike access as well as recreational Parklands Trail users. Um, and then the Gawler Place query, obviously Gawler Place north of Flinders Street is one way for those two blocks between Flinders, Piri, Piri Granful. So as part of this project, we see whether we can actually make those two ways for people riding bikes so they can get into and out of the core of the city and run them all back onto the east-west bikeway. So you can pull out. So that's technically not part of the current funding thing. No. But again, there's, there's some low cost, low, low impact options that we can look at. Obviously parking would be affected for those options through those two blocks. Parking through the current proposed block of all place between Flinders and Wayfield Street, it's only got parking on the one side, so we would need such parking in that block. But the other blocks we would. Okay, members, Greg. No, thanks, Chair. Um, as the new the entrant to the, the conversation, forgive me if, if I'm asking all the questions, uh, there's only a couple. Um, Firstly, um, putting to one side, as, as Councillor Sims has, has observed, the, the, the standard of finishes of the Fry uh, bikeway. Since its final completion, have we seen an appreciable increase in um, the use of, of that, those bikeways north, south, and from to south north? Uh, through the chair. We, we've got some permanent bike counters located between Grenfell Street and Peary Street. Obviously, the bikeway was only completed 12, 18 months ago, and given it's not complete, there's still the, the missing block. So, again, the data at the moment isn't showing any spikes in data, and obviously, COVID's thrown us out of the way as well. Uh, thank you. And through you, Chair, just a, just a follow up. I want to preface it by saying I'm very supportive of bicycle in the city and, and in answer to the key questions. Um, uh, I think you've done a, a commendable job of trying to find a compromise that, that manages uh, both. And in terms of delivery, my question relates to um, the iterative option for engagement. Have we canvassed Dick's uh, perspective on this? Are they happy to iterate? For us to iterate. Uh, through the chair, we haven't spoken in length with them about this option. Essentially, the funding deed is from, for them to fund the bikeway itself. I guess it's up to us to work out how we're going to deliver it. Yeah, I think it's quite broad, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Helen? Thank you for the endless work to try and find something that will be supported by the Chamber. I appreciate that you've worked hard to find the best route and then from the best route to find a route that will be supported by the Chamber. So thank you very much for all the work to make that happen. Um, I think that uh, the, the second option, the iterative version, would be most supported by, um, by cyclists. Let's get it in and, and get rolling. Um, and I think the key thing is going to be, given that we're not going to have the funding necessarily to uh, deliver some of the elements that might have been considered in the past and that might have been floated to the public and presented as possibilities, I think we're going to need to look as much as possible at, even if it is an iterative approach and we are looking at semi-temporary infrastructure, how we can make that the best possible infrastructure. So if there are options like planter boxes so we can get some greening in, if there's art options. Um, so it might not be big dollar values, but still finding ways to make it powerful, to make it impactful for the street so that the street that gets it sees it as a bonus. Um, and I think as part of that, as I know uh, the team has already looked at in the past, looking at how to really emphasise all of the benefits that the street that actually gets this will receive in terms of both what we know happens when you put a separated bikeway on the street, all of the research shows, all of the 
the positive benefits that flow. And I think we really need to keep making those points to ensure that that is well understood by the community when we do put it in. Um, but then looking at how we can support this with events, with um, with looking at you know what sorts of grants that we already have available that could be used to support ensuring that the streets get the most out of this so that they really see it as a benefit um, when it goes in. Um, the other thing is I think all of those numbers, thank you for putting that in and for showing where cyclists are currently moving but you know we do need to keep coming back to the fact that that's that's the number of people that are using a non-existent structure so that should not be at all indicative of what we are planning for in the future if we're legitimately looking at some kind of mode shift which is what we know benefits the city both in terms of health and well-being connectivity but also all of the economic elements so Yes, we can use those numbers as tiny little indicators of where people are currently traveling, but we want to look at this as when the network is in place, we know in every other city, regardless of size, small or large, smaller than Adelaide, larger than Adelaide, we know that it leads to a significant uptake and a mode shift. And that's what we want to plan for, to enable those who want to cycle to be able to cycle, not to say that cars are not able to also be in the city, but just to enable. And so I think we need to keep coming back to not looking at minimums, but looking at if this is the enabling infrastructure, what, how do we need to consider that? But thank you for continuing to persevere and find something that will hopefully be supported by the Chamber. Um, I totally agree with what uh, Helen said, um, absolutely. I think that that's definitely the way forward. Just a question around um, timeframes uh, here. When would this come to council for um, consideration? I guess I'm conscious that the clock is ticking. So what's the, the time frame in terms of us being able to potentially sign off on something like this? Yeah, uh, through the chair, thanks for the question. Uh, notwithstanding the feedback that we've received tonight, um, I'm feeling a general level of support for the, the, uh, the workable route that's been um, put forward by the team. So we will be going away tonight by the sounds of it and putting a further level of detail into this option. Um, we will be bringing uh, a report back to committee and council and at this stage we've got a tentative booking for, for that to be in the December council meeting. Great. So that's the plan at this stage on the basis that we want to get moving very quickly. So we could potentially have a route signed off and agreed by the end of the year. Uh, that's that, that would be the plan we take. Great. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Hope we can do it. That'd be excellent. Grant? Just following on from the, you know, talk about the economic benefit, I really look forward to, uh, have we have a plan to, uh, you know, given that this is will pass and all the rest, uh, how are we going to be able to, you know, bring back and measure this in regards to the, the actual streets? Because we talk a lot about increasing values and, and, uh, and uh, economic activity. It'd be really nice to be able to measure that and say, well, yes, so that uh, we, we can either you know, find comfort in us in, you know, that it does deliver for our, our rate payers and our stores, etc. It would be nice to see if there's a way that we could get some sort of uh, data from some, from, from some you know, a, a group of people that will help you know, help us to to appreciate uh, what difference it makes because that would that would then you know you put a report back you know, that, that would inform then us uh, you know that you know, the decisions we're making and also give us some comfort in future decisions uh, for for councils so that uh, you know we are doing something that you know the community will get benefit from. Uh, thank you, Chair. Look, uh, I think I'm the only elected member in this room who's been here for the entire discussion about east-west and stuff by quotes. I can remember uh, the night that uh, Martin Hazy uh, called uh, a confidential council meeting. Were you there, uh, Lord Mayor, were you? Uh, yes, I, I think I've been around for a while. Oh, I know, but you weren't there all of the last term, that's all I was saying. Anyway, yes, uh, we, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to distract you. Um, and, and so um, I, I remember the promise about the law and the way in which we were going to deliver a north-south bikeway, which by the way is still not complete, uh, which was to be the model for all that followed. 
and how it was going to not only encourage more cycling, but deliver the safest cycling system in the city of Adelaide and perhaps throughout all of Australia. And certainly the, uh, the initial iteration in Frome Street lived up to expectations. It is a quite remarkable bikeway. And, and what followed from there was a series of arguments that paralysed the remainder of the Hazy Council and this council about whether it went down Pirie Weymouth, down uh, Grove Wakefield, down Flinders Franklin, and, and ironically Flinders Franklin was the very route that was recommended by the administration. Uh, it was said to us that it was the safest possible route and the one that caused the least disruption except to some businesses who uh, complained uh, vociferously about uh, it running down past their businesses in Flinders Street. Um, uh, so here we are, apparently knowing that the funding deed from the state government is due to expire in June for more than four years now, having an emergency Monday night meeting of council in November to make a decision in December to expend all of the government's funds within six months to create a um, less than perfect bikeway down a less than perfect route, which will compromise cyclist safety, but uh, nevertheless, it is the best that we can do. And I lament that, I really do. I lament that we have failed to deliver the best possible outcome for cyclists. Are you done lamenting, Thank you. I was, I, just, I, I was actually just going to go back a little bit further than that for um, some members. And so the original, and actually, um, I know Katie, you remember this, the, the original bikeway that we put down in um, Frome Road was a demonstration bikeway. It was done for just over a million dollars, which were done for the Valley City Conference. Um, so that was in Stephen Yarwood's term. And uh, then we had to actually spend a fair bit of time undoing that and putting down what is now, uh, as you say, a bit of a, a gold-plated version, which sort of so it went from something that was actually very, um, uh, it, was, it was a test and trial prototype, if you like, to something that went way over the other side to make sure that we could actually do proof of concept and make sure that it would work. And it has worked, and we've actually got all the data to show that people love that, including the businesses along there who have uh, embraced it. It did take a long time. Part of the role we had to do was undo what had happened with the first bikeway. Um, and then, as, uh, as Councillor Martin said, the last council then um, couldn't move forward with the east-west because what we decided to do is deliver the north-south first and make sure that all of the problems that we had with the original one was put to bed, which it now has been. Everybody accepts that actually the northwest bikeway um, is well used and is needed. And so therefore we don't expect that we will have the same sort of um, um, challenges in putting down an east-west, uh, yeah, an east-west. Um, I do thank the team because it has been perseverance. And I also recall that in the early submissions in 2015, Pirie um, Weymouth was the preferred bikeway, and then it went to Flinders Franklin. I think what the team has done is found a route that we can all uh, be happy with and that will actually service the cyclists coming in north, south, uh, east, west and connect to north-south. And I'm really hoping that after a couple of years of inaction that this council is the one to deliver it. So I look forward to that report coming in as soon as you can, gentlemen. That would be fantastic. Robert. Thanks, Chair. Look, just to respond to um, Councillor Martin's point, you know, through, through be you- Be careful not to debate. Though. Oh, no, to we debate. have been asked for our opinions, so I'm providing it. Um, through you, Chair, um, you know, I understand your frustration, Councillor Martin. I share it. I think I was on the council with you um, when the yes, when the, the Frome Street uh, bikeway saga began. I guess for me, the question is: Is this perfect? And you know, it's not. Um, but I think we have a rare opportunity to get something happening. Um, and my view is, I, I don't want this to be a scenario where 
um, the quest for perfection becomes the enemy of the good and we miss an opportunity to get some uh, infrastructure rolled out. So I see this as a compromise um, and if other elected members are able to come to the table um, in the spirit of compromise and get something happening, um, then I'll certainly support it, even though it's not my best case um, scenario. But I would hate for us to finish this term of council and to have missed the opportunity and to lose the funding that's been provided um, by the state government. And I think the community are desperate for some more cycling infrastructure. And I think we can do this in a high quality way, particularly if we incorporate the suggestions that Councillor Donovan has made. Um, I think this could be a really good, really good way forward. Yes, just uh, in in lamenting, his in response. lamenting, I forgot to say, I forgot to say um, that um, I, I do worry about um, uh, not going through a consultation process. Um, uh, I understand the time pressures, but I I know this is the most controversial thing that this term of council will do, and, and it would be a pity to be lynched for not conducting at least some measure of consultation with stakeholders, property owners, cycling groups, and the like. It doesn't necessarily have to be, uh, as it's not a, um, a first-rate um, Frome Street bikeway, it doesn't have to be a first-rate public consultation with all the bells and whistles, but I do think it's important to go out and talk to people Whenever we don't, we get into trouble. And the Lord Mayor would remember, she was a general manager at the time. I don't think we consulted anyone about the initial Frame Street Bikeway for Velo City. I think that was an executive decision by the Lord Mayor, wasn't it? Uh, I can't tell you that it was an executive decision by the Lord Mayor. I think it was something that was done in consultation with the stakeholders that were doing Velo City, yeah. which was between state and city council. And, and it, it and the lesson of that, I thought, was that um, we got into all sorts of trouble with people um, who felt they should have been consulted, who didn't like the result. Um, and so I, I, I just think it's important to go out and ask people, even if it's a truncated period in which we do it, and it may, may not be the, the form of consultation model that I think we do need to ask. Um, well, thinking on that and the conversations I've had previously, uh, is this also so around this uh, east west? We've been talking about you know, networks and things like that. So, um, so as part of, of this, uh, you know, we have really got all the data and everything to be able to sort of uh, again uh, you know, draw that out and then you put it in, into a context of a, some sort of a network arrangement. So, it's like get all the all the roots in as we as we already have. It's just to start uh, to look a bit more seriously at you know just having in place. Uh, or you know, using what you already have as the data to be able to say, well, this is the these are the sorts of routes that we uh, that people are wanting or or accessing from the suburbs, so that we do have a document that can be handed forward to you know next generations that will help inform them uh, as we are now have been you know I think really well informed uh, that way you know we can continue on at least with some uh, with some measure of, of understanding and then so people can uh, get across this a lot quicker. Okay, um, I just want to pick up on a couple of questions. Um, Phil, Phil touched on it, but can we, can, the, the motion that Council passed on the 10th of March 2020, do we have any update on that? So, um, number one, I guess the first question is, completion of the City of Adelaide Bikeways design guide that is in draft version still, September 2017. Um, that motion requested a workshop so that we could finalise that document. when. Are you planning on having that workshop before December? Clinton? Um, yeah, through you, Chair. Uh, the, the motion that's currently in front of us to deliver for Council is, is a piece of work that we're continuing. Um, I, I guess we're here in front of you tonight to try and, um, notwithstanding that work that's being undertaken, find a way forward um, for East West and try and get an, an indication in parallel to us um, working on that on that resolution of council, so that that's why we're here in front of you tonight. Yeah, but I mean, and this was part of the reason I think that motion was supported is that we don't have clarity on what you're putting down yet. 
and I understand I understand you've 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 suggested a sort of Frome Street light option or what is probably more of a Frome Street original option, um, which is just some some green paint down and some concrete separators and what have you. Um, but I, I think, it was, and this goes to what Councillor Martin was saying, I think there, there are actually a lot of people along Franklin Street um, who are happy to have a bikeway and happy to lose parking for it. But one of the main reasons they want it is actually because of the green aspect and the beautification aspect for their street, which is really just concrete um, with a few trees at the moment. Um, and that, that really concerns me as well. Um, so I, I, I think we're sort of putting the, the horse before the, the cart before the horse here. Um, because we haven't finalised the various options that we can roll out, whether it's the gold plated or this or that, or, or how you how you're going to do it. Your, your design guide is not yet finished. There are interfaces with public transport in the design guide that are not yet finalised, and I know that's an issue that's been brought up before. Um, uh, and uh, personally, until that's done, and until I don't want to tick off on a route before I know what you're putting on it precisely what you're putting on it. That's a, that's a big part of the problem um, for me. But also also on the, also when, I mean, do we have, we don't have, an, and again, Councillor Martin touched on it, the, the cost, what's, what is the cost, what is the cost per metre of track lay? What, what, I mean, what was the, what was the cost of the Frome Street option, for example? Um, through you, Chair, uh, again, I don't have the detail costs in front of me, but, um, a section of the Frome Street bikeway um, between blocks, so from one block to the next, so say from um, Wakefield to um, Peary. Uh, typically, we were looking at both sides of the road with exposed aggregate concrete, planting, irrigation, trees, footpath upgrades, and yep. all of the associated line marking around $3 million per, per block. Um, so that was the total investment. Now, obviously, some of that investment was our own asset renewals, um, not associated with the bikeway. But that's that's typically that type of um, right. design. So then, so what then, is that sort of cost? So what would what would a block of the light version cost? What would that what would be the equivalent? Uh, it would be significantly less than that. Obviously, but less. Yeah, but um, we uh, we don't have that definite cost, but we can um, I can come back to you with some. Unit rate costs um, typically that it would cost to put that. Sort yeah, of and see that's and that's that's the sort of detail that I'd just be comfortable seeing for. I think everyone here wants to deliver an east-west bikeway, um, but it, it, in reality, you you don't know what you're putting, you don't know what you're laying down, you don't know how much it's costing. I mean, we've heard tonight. To, I'm I'm sorry, Daniel. Did you what was the what was the uplift in usage for the currently? I mean, you've got you've got most of it they're done. I appreciate there are bus passes that are connected to the north, but over the section that you've got, what is the increase in cyclist usage per day? I haven't got that data in front of me. More than happy to send it through. But again, we've only got this much of the bikeway done until that northern section done, which obviously connects up to the universities and obviously we have a lot more destination trips to go. Until we've got that connected, we're not going to see a huge increase in numbers. So you so you can't you can't tell us what the what the uptick is. No 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 no. But, but, but earlier earlier he said that it was not reflected. No uptick was reflected in the data. We've had previous data on that, and it was it was significant. Like without my memory is that it was more than double. But you know without going back. But, and, and that's that's the sort of stuff that I think we should be seeing. I mean, oh. I thought this I thought this workshop was going to be a complete. Um, history of what's what's happened done the history. and a bit of it and not and a bit, but but a substantial analysis of what you get when you lay a bikeway down how much it costs i mean there were there were i think it was the city of fremantle i saw they they rolled out quite a quite a number of kilometers of, of separated bikeway and they did a cost benefit analysis on it and it came up and it was over one dollar and so that makes it good i mean it's not a terribly complicated thing for this city this capital city council to do a cost benefit analysis and understand what the increase in usage is going to be, measure that against the against the cost, against the cost of the different types of bikeway that you can roll out. Um, and I just I just feel that, that work hasn't been done. Again, I want to meet this deadline, and that's why that's why at four in this motion it said prioritizes this work to ensure to ensure it is achieved within a time frame that allows the data analysis and reports gained to be used in the delivery of an east-west bikeway within DIPT's time frame. 
but there's been absolutely no movement on that. I mean, how can you say we're going to we're going to roll out you know a terrace to terrace bikeway without having finished it, which without having finished a design guide on what it looks like? It's it's just and that's why I think we need to get that clear first before we move on. Um, there were there were another couple of questions as well that I had for. Um, for Daniel and Matt, what um, when looking at Franklin Street and where it hits the parklands there um, on West Terrace, what do you know? Obviously, when you're looking at Sir Donald Bradman or Wakefield Street entering entering the city city streets and squares, um, you know how many bikes are coming off and using those corridors. But do you have a do you have any indication of what's coming in from the parklands and then going down Franklin currently? As in thinking of Sir Donald Bradman Drive as Parklands Road, you've got an indication of who's who's crossing the parklands and coming down that corridor. And through your chair. So the image provided in the, the package that's got the yellow boxes, that shows 400 people on bikes per day coming down to Sir Donald Bradman Drive. Yes, so that's coming along the, the bike path and on road. And when they obviously get to the Shandy's path, then some left, some right, and some continue. Yeah, no, no, I know, but I'm, I'm talking about entering Franklin Street from sort of the parkland, so that what goes up, what goes up on the western side of West Terrace, or through the parklands, who's who's then coming through the parklands onto onto Franklin? Is do, you may not have the data, it may not exist, but that's the question. Is there anything? So the western block of Frank, Franklin Street has got th uh, currently 300 people on bikes per day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I know. But you don't know who's coming across the parklands because that's part of what you're proposing. If you go along Franklin Street, hit the terrace, some will go up and down and some will, will filter through the parklands. Is that, is that the idea? I was thinking, again, it come, comes down to the network, people coming into the city. We don't. Um, well, essentially, then, other than Don Rabin Drive, Glover Avenue, and then Anzac Highway, Sheffield's Park, there's not really any, any other way to get to the western suburbs through the parklands. Yeah, yeah. So, so somehow all those the four hundred people. It's just if you add the numbers up along the corridors and what's on Franklin, they don't they don't match. I mean, most of those four hundred continue down Wakefield, which stands to reason. Um, and the same with with what's coming from from Port Road. So, but that's okay. That that obviously doesn't exist, so that's fine. Um, uh, just thinking about um, the section of Wakefield where we're seeing. That you're going to lose 40% of car parks, um, and I know that this might not be actually indicative of what it looks like, but those those possible layouts that you gave, and if I can find the possible layout for Wakefield Street, is that are those to scale? Because you've got the bikeway there as wide as a car lane. So I'm just thinking. I think it's page. Um, let me try and find it out. Yeah, page uh, or slide 17. Uh, through your chair, is, is that the one on the screen you're referring to? Uh, yes, that's one. So, so that's indicative only. The width of the bikeway would be in the order of two, two and a half metres. But again, we're working within existing curb lines, essentially reallocating space within that. How wide is current from street option? Uh, it's about two and a half metres. It does reduce, it does vary in width. Obviously, by the hotels, yeah. it gets down to approximately twelve yeah, hundred. There's some other sections around two metres. Okay. Um, and was there any consideration given to potentially making the median super? It, it, I'm looking at efforts to maintain angle parking. Um, but was there any consideration given to uh, eating into the median strip at all and using that space to to maintain angle parking? Because there are parts of Parts of, and if you look at the image you've used there um, for Wakefield Street, it's actually quite, it's actually quite a deal wider um, than what than what this indicates. Is this is this the smallest section of it, or through your chair? This is this is a typical section. So the median down some of those sections does provide for right hand, like the right turn lanes as well. So obviously reducing the median would then impact on the right turn lanes. Mm -hmm. So we haven't looked at that extensively. It's something we could do. Yeah, yeah. I just think in any efforts to preserve parking, you'll meet less opposition down the track. And so I think that would be beneficial. One of the reasons that I liked Grove and Wakefield was because it was the widest, it is the widest corridor in the city. 
Um, and there, there's the, the, the report from a, from a workshop in 2017, obviously before our time, um, did detail the narrowest, narrowest, sorry, Phil, Sandy, um, did detail the narrowest section of, um, of the Groton Wakefield Corridor. I just wondered if that's what, what fed into that um, there, but obviously not. Um, I suppose as well, why, and I'm just trying to understand historically, when, when you look at the report, there was, uh, Piri Weymouth was, was ruled out, and I think that was because of the disruption. Um, yes, Flinders Franklin was the preferred option, um, but the second most preferred option was Groat Wakefield. Now, why, why was Groat Wakefield, um, I suppose, why was it the second most preferred option? Why, why did it, why did it come in over above Piri and Weymouth before? That's because that's that's what I want to understand. Because looking at it logically, um, I don't know why council, if if they said no to Flinders Franklin, I don't know why they didn't go down to Fred and Wakefield after that. It was the administration's second most preferred option, um, with Perry Weymouth coming in at the third. And actually, had I known that, um, I wouldn't have even uh, suggested at the time. I think in twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen that we even look at Perry Weymouth. You so, wasted twelve months on that exercise. So. <laughs> So why? So my question is, why is Groat Wakefield your second most preferred option in 2017? And then, because it, it, it helps me understand why we're looking at half of it now, I guess. Um, I, I understand back at, back in 2017, that obviously Flinders Franklin was a preferred. Groat Wakefield was second second preference. Obviously, there's, there's buses on there, which makes it less preferable compared to Flinders Franklin. However. That, that ranked higher than Pew Weymouth due to the disruption and the significant parking loss. Right. Okay. So that and that was that was purely parking loss. Uh, as, as I understand it, yeah. yeah. Come to count, yeah. Yeah. Back, back then, the, the dog leg options were being considered. So obviously, with, with this compromised option, you know, we, we avoid all of the heavy utilised bus stops on Grove Street. Yes. So the patronage of those bus stops at multiple times of what the bus stops are on Wakefield Street. Yep. Yeah, no, understood. And I suppose my last question is sort of operational in a sense. If, if for example, and this I guess is to you, Clinton, um, if for example we said we did want to do the Frome Street version, um, obviously that would take a little bit longer to roll out. Um, uh, but as you said, $3 million, which is what's sitting on the table here from the state government, what we're worried about losing is one block. Um, would it not be fair to say that you could actually spend that allocation of funding well before, if we said we want Frome Street and we want it along here, could it? Could your department spend that funding, that quantum of funding that the state government has on offer before before the end of the funding deal period? Uh, through the chair, I think I understand your question. Um, do you mean? Uh, delivering a portion of the east-west is that is that what you mean? Well, I mean, if you if you're worried about losing the funding, not delivering a portion. Let's say we said we want to deliver the whole thing, mm -hmm. and let's for, for argument's sake say we're we're doing all the route we've identified, um, but we actually would prefer, let's say, if we had if we had the design way design guide, you know, bike waste design guide workshop, we said, well, in actual fact, you know, we do want we do want the Frome Street option, east-west terrace to terrace. Um, would 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 your department be able to do a, at least preliminary designs for a substantial enough section of it to expend those funds from the state government within the deemed time frame and thus overcome this the issue of that money expiring essentially? Uh, to answer that question, Chair, I think um, the de the devil's in the detail. So I think what we would find um, undertaking the Frome Road design is that because of the change in the level of the bikeway and the difference between the road and the, and the bikeway, it involved a significant amount of stormwater redesign. Mm -hmm. So um, generally the amount of design work that would have to go into the Frome Street design would be a lot more than what we're proposing through the, the um, proposed infrastructure that we're putting forward. So um, to answer your question, uh, there's not a lot of time between now and June 30. Um, typically there might be um, a few months worth of design work um, just to to land a final design for a Frome Street type design for a single block or for the whole corridor. Uh, well, typically, um, I'm you, you'd do it all. Once. You would do the whole usually design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. typically. Yeah. Okay.
Understood. I'm not sure if that answered my question. I don't think it did. <laughs> <laughs> but you try. That's I'm important. Honest. Yeah, thanks. Helen? Okay. So, um, the average uplift, economic uplift for cycling infrastructure around the world, I believe, is somewhere in the order of $5 for every dollar spent. Would that be roughly correct? Okay, just to, ask, to present the information in the form of the question. Um, that's right, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so that's average, meaning typically it's a lot more, but there are some in, some uh, some times when it is when it is less. But typically five dollars for every dollar spent. That's cycling infrastructure, not just separated bikeways. Um, and the bike design guidelines for that to be delivered. I would assume given every street is going to have very different circumstances and every street is going to have vastly different needs that any kind of bike design guideline would simply point to things like it must be as per Oz Roads guidelines, it must be a minimum of X width, those sorts of things. Would that be true? Uh, through the Chair, you're quite correct in that uh, Oz Roads guidelines determine uh, generally the widths and makeup of how a, a cycle network and separated cycle network would work. Um, so yes, it would be typical in that. And I suppose in any strategic management plan or guideline uh, would require significant consultation with the community and the timeframes around that would be extensive for each area. So we're not gonna come up with something that says we're gonna deliver X on every street because X is never going to apply to every street. We're gonna have an A through Z. So there's no guideline that is going to assist us with this particular decision because we know what the Osroad specifications are and we know that we can make a decision that is going to vary dependent upon the street and the, the, the variety of um, different types of businesses and access points and turning points along the street. Would that be true? Uh, through the chair, um, I think the technical detail will stay pretty consistent. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the referred uh, point is around the pallet and whether it's concrete, green, those items aren't covered in the guidelines and certainly would be would form part of a consultation pack. Mm -hmm. How's it's going to vary dependent upon the street yeah, and what's required on that street. Um, and then just one, uh, one other question, if this uh, street, if this path does progress and gets approved. Is it possible for us to look at a linkage between Franklin and the markets perhaps through the joinery or something? If we're looking at sort of other low cost options to deliver at the same time, can we look at some way of connecting the bikeway to the markets? Yeah, Pitt Street through the joinery, any of those to try and get some of those additional little linkages that are, are relatively low cost? Well, it would intersect with the market to a bank anyway, I guess, wouldn't it? Which is no, yeah. yeah, low volume. Yep. Mary? Thank you, Chair. I think the most um, disappointing part of it, of it all is that we voted for a motion back in March 2020, um, which delayed the process of, of all of this. And from that, from voting for this motion, is it hoping to get that information that's in there and I was really looking forward to getting that information to be able to make a real informed decision um, because unlike Helen I don't have all the knowledge that she has in regards to bikes and all of that so we're here to get that information from you and this came through as a motion so I guess that's one disappointing factor of it um, and um, the fact that you've got it in here is you're telling me that you're working on it and yet we still haven't got that information going back in March 2020. So I can say that's part of the disappointing part of all of this because we could have, if we could have been delivered to get to this point to make an informed decision, then we could have made some sort of decision back in March 2020 and not be in this position to, you know, fast track um, this um, this. Uh, bike path for East West that we're looking at. So that's one aspect that I just want to make clear on all of that. I would like to probably have some of this information if this gets uh, <coughs> through in December um, connected with a report. Um, I think that's really important. I think if we've gotten this far and this is what we wanted, I think that we should, should have delivered on that because you can see that it was very important. Um, back then and it still is important and a lot of the key questions in a b and c and d would be nice to have 
Um, I guess, you know, it's not, I don't think there's any councillor here that doesn't want to deliver on this. I think we um, want to make all the right decisions in, in regards to it. I know I understand that the Lord Mayor and Councillor Martin are very privy to a lot of conversations that have happened in the past in regarding bike paths and, and bike ways and all of that. But, you know, being new to council, all of that would have been quite helpful. Um, so I guess I, it would be appreciative if when you do present something in December that we have more information at hand for us to be able to make some really informed decisions in regards to this. Thank you. I just want to echo those thoughts. You probably summed it up better than I did, Mary, and that's that I would I would be happy to make this decision now if I had the information that we asked for in March. I'd be happy for this to be a council meeting and I don't see it actually on face value. I don't see any issues with this route. So sorry, Clinton, that may not have come through in my interrogation. Um, uh, but uh, on face value, I don't see any issues with it. Um, I would like to see more beautification and what have you. Um, if we go to the cheap option, I guess that's fine. Um, but I, yeah, I really wanted to have that information on hand to make an informed decision because um, while I, to, to be frank with you, um, while there are there are councillors here who uh, cyclists know and support them and that's what they stand for, there are councillors here who didn't run on that platform and I want to do the right thing and I want to make the right decision by the biggest number of people, but I also need to answer to those people that will lose a car park in front of their business. I need to answer to that person. I need to take their angry phone call. And if I can tell them that this is why we're doing it and on balance, it's a good thing, then I will. But I need to be armed with that information first. That's why we asked for it. That's what we need to go out and advocate for a good project because change is never easy. Um, and, uh, but it, you know, it, it can still be done. Anyway, Helen. Has some um, COVID and some of the staff loss impacted on your ability to provide all of that information? Uh, through the chair, um, there's a lot of competing things happening at the moment, uh, obviously, but um, uh, yeah, I think there's um, some pieces of work, there's been shifts in management and changing portfolios, there's been a number of things that have potentially um, let that one um, not be completed for tonight. Um, however, there is quite a bit of work that's happening in the background and we're happy to bring some of that information back in the report in December. Okay, anything else? All right, thank you. That's it, uh, I'll declare this meeting closed.